What is up, guys? It's the Sound Alchemist here with the one, the only Gersh One. And today we're back at it to answer more questions from you guys in another installment of For the Greater. <laughs> this is a video series where we answer the questions left by you, the viewer. If you have a question for us, comment down below. Put a question in front of your question because we get to those questions first. first. That is what uh, Hohen Toribio did. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think about the Octaria sector? especially the orcs and nids evolving which can lead to something crazy in the galaxy so in other words organids <laughs> yeah not necessarily a fusion of the two but i mean the thing about orcs and tyranids is that they both are highly like created to evolve and become better than what they were before yeah they use their opponent as a jump off point to become tougher specifically in close combat it seems well not for the tyranids but like yeah tyranids to whatever orcs more so close combat yeah so the octarius sector the way that it was sold to us in the very very beginning before the actual uh, codex came out or what is it called battle zone right yeah, war zone. Zone. yeah war zone octarius yeah before that came out it was basically just that uh there was the octarius sector ruled over by the overfiend of octarius which was just a title it wasn't one orc but like there's this big badass orc there who ruled an empire an orc empire and the tyranids came in i don't remember which high fleet uh do you know wasn't it because of Kripman? it might oh yeah yeah the inquisitor yeah, yeah. So the Inquisition was like, hey, we know that uh, the Tyranid high fleets follow Gene Stealer uh, broods. Let's launch a Gene Stealer brood into the Orc Empire and you know, have the Tyranids take care of the Orcs in that sector. Yeah. And then once they leave, then we can come back and repopulate. It backfired. Because as soon as the Tyranids came in, they began to like destroy the Orc Empire and then push them back. But obviously the Orcs had a retaliation phase and it went back and forth. Until finally the Tyranids surrounded the Orcs. I think it was in the Octarius sector, the Octarius yeah. world. Yep. And uh, who came to save the Orcs? God's ghoul Magorakthraka. He shows up with his, uh, what are they called? Fortresses or rocks? Yeah, rock fortresses, yeah. He pushes back the Tyranids and now there's a, a huge war raging uh, where the Orcs are turning into like these super powered giant black Orcs because they constantly fight Tyranids. Yeah. And then the Tyranids are just becoming tougher and better because they're evolving to fight the, this. the orcs. Yeah. yeah. So honestly, it is a huge backfire because when you think about it, the orcs and the Tyranids separate, they're a threat. Yeah. But now that they're getting evolved and they're getting stronger and stronger with each battle, like they're going to become a monster. Whoever comes out of this is going to be pretty much ready to take on the rest of the galaxy at this point. Yeah, and the story is awesome. It gets you inspired. It makes you want to start in an orc army and whatnot, uh, or a Tyranid army. The unfortunate thing is I think that this is going to be an Armageddon situation where it never gets resolved. Yeah. It just constantly keeps going. Yeah, it's just a maelstrom of war with, like, it's kind of like when you're playing video games and it's, like, kind of like a tug-of-war thing where, like, oh, the orcs are winning, oh, Tyranids, and it just goes back and forth. Yeah, well, what would be cool is uh, GW could launch, like, some type of orc tyranid or orc gene stealer hybrid mm -hmm. that is specific from that area that's like uh, better in close combat kind of like an i think they're called aberrants right or abominations yeah. aberrants yeah Aber um the thing though going back to his like first question is like do you think that the orcs would evolve to become krork to take on the tyranids oh yeah so no because krork are just basically blood axes yeah yeah there's no real like it's not because a lot of people think of like Krorks or like brain boys yeah. as like a higher intelligent orc that's not really the case kind of i mean in a way yes but not to that sense right yeah they're just like uh very unorganized and, and sporadic or mm -hmm. not sporadic um fraction fractionalized <laughs> yeah. fractionalized fractionalized take that r out the word yeah <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's that's what I think. GW is just gonna like screw us around because at the end of the day, they're Xenos uh, races, mm -hmm. and Xeno races don't sell uh, very well. Right. Um, but frankly, there's a whole bunch of new stuff coming out for Tyranids currently, and um, they got the Parasite of Mortrex. That's gonna be fun. Mm -hmm. Psyker, right? It's a Psyker, yeah. Uh, I think it was way back in fifth edition was when it had rules, and then it kind of took it away, and now it's back. So let's hope, let's cross our fingers and hope for more badass Tyranid models. Um, but don't don't uh, hold your breath. Mm -hmm. This next one is by King Naga. 
If GW wants the newly returned squads to be their own independent faction, as opposed to just another auxiliary to the Imperium, how do you think they will stand on their own? Could we see a coalition of abhumans with the squads, maybe joined with Ogrins, Ratlings, etc.? Yeah, definitely stand on their own because I think that's what they're doing. Yeah, they the, hate the Imperium. Exactly. The leagues of Voltan are returning. Um, that they, they have a grudge against the Imperium with the whole like Tyranid debacle where the Imperium basically didn't give them aid. And then they were kind of lost to the annals of space and now they're back. Yeah. So we'll see exactly if that grudge actually becomes like a hatred or like rules on the tabletop that they get better. Um, or they get like rules or benefits fighting the Imperium or maybe they're just like eh, you know it's just water under the bridge and they'll they'll ally with them yeah it would kind of make sense for them to to go both ways like mm -hmm. it makes sense from a tabletop perspective that the 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 league what is it league of what leagues of Voltan uh, it, would be, it would make sense that they would want to fight the Imperium because like they're abhumans and like yeah. otherwise like it just wouldn't really make sense. You would never have an army of Ogrins fighting against the Imperium because just like, they're abhumans. Um, but then at the same time, story wise, I can see uh, why they would like team up with the Imperium because mm -hmm. they're trying to fight Tyranids. Exactly. Right? And if the Tyranid Codex is coming out, there's probably going to be some fluff around the Tyranids. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah, because otherwise there might be split into like, you know, how there's like different like sub factions inside like the whole squats. So maybe the Leagues of Voltan is just one of these sub factions. And there's like another sub faction that's like anti human, yeah. anti Imperium, that kind of thing. So you, you gave me Tau vibes right now, talking about like. Because it's come almost like, uh, you know, how like the Tau Empire has mm. the far side enclaves. enclaves yeah. It'd be funny if the League had like squats that are either loyalist or not yeah. uh, for the, the, the Imperium, which might be a thing. Because like that, again, like whenever GW brings out anything, it's really just like, how can you take it and then mold it into whatever you want? Exactly. So it's going to be cool uh, to see what they come up with. There's another thing too. Oh, as far as like being competitive on the tabletop, they, they're known for like the stereotypical dwarf uh, thing of like being forgers, mm -hmm. so they, they probably have like master crafted thunder hammers with no uh, penalties for wielding them. Oh yeah, uh, for, like they're probably going to have access maybe to STCs, those standard template constructs that come from the dark age of technology, because mm -hmm. after all they were some type of human. Yeah. Uh, um, so I think they're going to be a good mix of heavy, heavy armor. Is it heavy armor? Yeah. Right. Yeah, heavy support. Heavy support. There yeah. you go. Uh, so something like that. Uh, and then it kind of gives me vibes of the Harlequins. Because when the Harlequins came out, they were very specific. Like the Harlequins were... A fast attack army. <laughs> and they still are. Yeah. So I, I hope that they don't... That the, the squats don't get the Harlequin um, thing. And they only come out with like four heavy supports. <laughs> and then a, a troop choice. And then you're done. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. Um, chaos squats maybe? Chaos squats would be badass. Yeah. Are squats psychers too? Maybe we'll get to see something like that. Yeah, I know, like, if they're trying to mimic the whole Tolkien thing, dwarves are not. They're not, yeah. Yeah, are, are psychically powerful as the elves. Yeah. Or even humans, right? As far as I know, they weren't, no. Yeah. But we'll, we'll have to wait and see. There's a lot they can do with it. Um, there's a lot that they could dip their toes into. Like, they're going to have technology of, like, the Tau, um, the resiliency of, like, space marines, and who knows what, what else. Oh, yeah, that's true. I never thought about that, yeah. Next one. Uh, this one's by The Seeker. Which factions do you think will be the last ones standing at the end of it all? I've done a lot of theory videos for like the, um, the race to, to conquer the galaxy. Not so much like overall, because you did the, um, death, oh, the of death of 40K. 40K. Yeah. But like as far as I see it, um, I feel like it's either going to be the Tyranids or the Orcs. That, or Tyranids, Orcs, and Necrons. Basically the bad guy. <laughs> Essentially, yeah. The bad guys. Because I guess the good guys are humanity in this in this aspect. The Tally yelled, are you? Yeah. Because um, honestly, I don't see the orcs going away anytime soon. Uh, the the Tyran is, they're taking control of the galaxy right now, and they're not even all here. Yeah, that's scary. <laughs> yeah. And um, humanity, I just don't see them coming out on top. They're steadily declining after their golden age. Uh, chaos is making sure that happens so and chaos for sure like the, you would think that chaos would stand a better chance at maybe even making it out to the end 
But no, they are dependent on humanity. So if humanity goes away, chaos goes away. That's true, yeah. Because uh, the whole thing about the chaos gods, it's, it's a give and take. Yes, they want to claim souls and whatnot, but they also need living sentient souls to feed. So it's like, you can't eat all your, your crops because then you got no more crops to sustain you. Right. Farmers know. <laughs> yeah. Trust me, I was on FarmersOnly.com. Uh, the last question, do you have one? This one's by Gfish17. If GW brings back the Emperor, how do they maintain the grim, dark aesthetic after hope is essentially restored? Same way as uh, Horus Heresy. Like mm -hmm. the Horus Heresy still has a lot of grim, dark aesthetic. Yeah. On top of the fact that they're, you know, the Emperor's walking around and you know, shaking hands, kissing babies. <laughs> exactly. Going throughout the galaxy. It's yeah. Like, just because you know, the <laughs> just because the Emperor's back doesn't mean that everything is perfect. Um, usually if the Emperor revives in some shape, way, or form, it's not going to be without repercussions. However that happens, that's going to hurt humanity, but also help it. And then it's kind of like they have to rebuild, and they also have chaos to fight. All the Xenos are still there. Like, the threats don't go away just by the Emperor coming back. Oh yeah, for sure. So, just look to Horus Heresy. The Ecclesiarchy is going to be a big factor into this, because I'm pretty sure there's going to be like warlords, gov planetary governors, etc. That are going to be like, the Emperor coming back, that's not the real Emperor. The real Emperor's on the throne. Like, this guy's an imposter. And there, there's going to be little pockets of insurrection and civil war that's going to break loose. And then that just sounds like Dune. Yeah. The, the prime grim dark uh, sci-fi, or yeah, sci-fi world. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Those are the questions for today. If you guys have more questions for us, please comment down below. Thank you guys so much for listening to us and hanging out, and we'll talk tomorrow. That's right. This has been The Sound Alchemist. It's Gersh One. And we are out. <laughs>